Now, this is a good topic, mate. We get asked this uh, quite a lot. Um, it's in conjunction with that, the videos that we've done on seat setback. So how to set the saddle fore and aft position. How do you know if it's too far back is the first question. And we'll deal with too far forward in another topic. So one of the, this, I've come up with four different things that you want to look, look for here. Um, the first one is probably the most difficult to sort of understand in terms of how, how the biomechanics are interplayed with here. The first one is basically, if the seat is too far back, you will feel, in essence, almost too light on your hands when you're riding. And this might sound strange, like how can you be too light on your hands? If the seat, when the seat goes a long way back, the rider's pelvis obviously moves away, rearwards away from the center of rotation of the cranks. The rider will start, start to feel as if they're struggling to reach out to get over the top of the stroke. They'll feel like they're kind of towing the pedal with their foot, struggling to reach out there. One of the net effects of this, assuming that the seat height and everything else are pretty much where they should be, one of the net effects is that you will start to unweight your, your front end really heavily. So you start to feel really light on the hands. Now, we actually want riders to be light on their hands. So some might say, well, this is a good thing. Why don't we just shove our seat two meters behind the bottom bracket and we'll all be light as a, as a feather on our hands. As you go too far back, there are other negative consequences which start to outweigh the lightening effect on the front end. So being too light on the front end though, is, is a sign maybe potentially that the, 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 the seat's too far back. So what I tend to do is tell people to creep it forward until they start feeling that increase in weight on their hands and then just pull it slightly back from that point. You wanna be as far forward as you possibly can so that you don't have too much weight on your hands, usually. That's a good rule of thumb. So a lack of weight on the hands. A sensation that when you sit upright, uh, this might come with this, if you sit upright and you take your hands off the bar, the front end might feel like it's gonna wander away, like yeah, the bike is really not stable. This can often be a sign that the bike's, the, the rider's center of gravity is too far back and that the front end is unstable because they can't ride with their hands off the bar. That's another unusual one. And that kind of ties in with the seat being too far back and too light on the front end. That comes with a center of gravity shift towards the rear of the bike, which makes the front end less stable. It also reduces the traction on the front tyre. So going through corners at high speed, if the seat's too far back, you might feel like the front tyre is a bit skittish. It's unweighted too much. Second thing you want to look for is, and, and second and third things, are changes in the muscle loading in your legs. So when the seat goes a long way back behind the bottom bracket, um, at some point you'll start to feel like you're losing your ability to get over the top of the pedal and push down, almost like you're losing your ability to stamp down on the pedal. When that happens, you start to lose a fair bit of your quadricep loading off the, over the top of the pedal stroke. So if the seat is too far back, you might feel a preponderance of hamstring load or an overload in your hamstrings. This will be most noticeable at high intensity. So you're doing VO2 max style efforts, that kind of thing. And you'll notice that your hamstrings are getting a flogging while your quadriceps are kind of not doing much or they feel unusually weak. Um, so that, that kind of ties into the next thing is that you will feel a lack of quadricep engagement on the downstroke when the seat is too far back. Over engagement of the hamstrings, in particular the upper hamstring, and an over engagement, uh, sorry, an under engagement of the quadricep group. So the rider sort of needs to feel when they're going hard or when they're even when they're going up a climb, they need to feel like they're getting over the top of the pedal and pushing down and they're not out behind the bottom bracket kind of reaching for the pedal. As that occurs, you'll get an overload of, of the hamstring a little bit. And to some extent also the calf if you feel like your calves are working really hard it's sometimes an indication that the seat is too far back and you're towing the pedal to try and help yourself reach through the bottom of the stroke last thing to look for and this is a, a really good way of fine-tuning seat setback as well when you're riding on the flat, if you feel pretty much fine, but as soon as you go up an incline of about sort of four or 5%, so not a, not a really steep 20% gradient or 15% gradient, but on a slight incline, if you start to feel like you lose control of the bottom of the stroke, like your leg extension is starting to get a bit choppy, it often means that the seat is too far back. It can also mean that it's slightly too high or that maybe the cleat position's a bit too far forward, but for the sake of not 
not making this too complicated, if the seat is too far back, as soon as the rider rotates, or the bike rotates back to go up the slope, the rider's pelvis will move out behind the bottom bracket more than it was, and their relationship with the bottom bracket and gravity will all change. And usually if the seat is a smidge too far back, the rider will just start to feel again like they're just struggling to get over the top of the pedal and reach over and push down with, with solid downwards force. They'll feel like they're kind of out behind the bottom bracket and they're towing the pedal to help them reach through the bottom of the stroke. So those are the four big signs to look for with, with the seat being too far back. Um, you, may also find, uh, you may also find that you creep forward on the saddle under load, but that, that one's not really, that's not a great indicator of setback. It can also mean that the cleat position's too far forward, the seat's too high. So I've tried to keep this as, as specific as I can to this topic. Bear in mind, as with all things bike fitting and biomechanics, if one of the other things is wrong, it will mess up your sense of which thing is right. Yeah, so if the seat's too high and you move the seat a bit too far back, it'll be difficult to tell that it's too far back because it's also too high. So um, you must make sure that your seat height is set correctly and we can include a link here to our video about how to set your seat height um, and then fine tuning the setback based upon those four metrics. Um, those are the four things to look for when the seat's too far back. Hopefully that makes sense. Mm -hmm.